punch a punk, that's all, eh? Magic is in you. The death. The magic is in you. Death. The death. Everybody loves Teddy, Ralph. Just where you meet him. He's a real practical joker. Did I ever tell you about the time he and I spent two days on a stakeout in a massage parlor? <laughs> yeah, Bill, you told us about that one over Denver. And Albuquerque. And Miami. And Cuba. What massage parlor? Hey, I didn't hear it. All right. All right. Hey, where's the rum drinks? The island girl. Where's the baggage carry? All right, everybody, come on, form up over here. I want to talk to you. Come on, get it. There's all right, all right, all right. Sherry, right. supposed to meet us. Now, listen, anyone has any uh, questions about any of the historical data around here, I want you to feel Woo! free to ask. I know we're down here to have a good time, but uh, we might as well take advantage of it and turn it into a class project. See? So, uh, matter of fact, you might as well take notes. You're starting to sound like a real loser there, Mr. H. Ooh, the sun, the beach, the sea. Woo! Well, honey, I tell you what we're gonna do. Tomorrow, you and I, we're gonna rent one of these catamarans they showed here in the travel brochure, and we're gonna explore some of these islands. Now, listen, Pam, I know you finally kissed the money to come down here, and I know that Bill's friend, Mr. McClurry, is going McSherry, to... McSherry, McSherry, McSherry. McSherry. I know McSherry is going to put us all up and pay you guys to help with the salvage project. Well, where's Ted, anyway? He's supposed to meet us here. While we're here, we might as well absorb as much culture as we can. It's getting really boring now, Mr. It's really boring. Now, listen. You all have French English dictionaries. I want you to feel free to use them as often as you can. You know, if we uh, pick up a little rudimentary French while we're down here, it wouldn't hide. Wait. Well, there's a mechanic over there. Maybe he's seen Teddy this morning. Uh, everybody knows McSherry. Great guy. You're going to love him. Wait till you see him. I want to show you something. The Ugly American. It's a classical act. Watch this. The opening hey, insult. Have heard you seen Ted McSherry? Uh huh. Now badge him. No. Is that the I'll threaten him. You don't want to spend the rest of your life in jail. And now the native response. I bet those guys don't know what year it is either. Oh, he slays me. I gotta act as interpreter while we're down here. Bill's gonna get us killed. Good idea. You see that? Did you get a load of those two yo-yos? Wouldn't even talk to me. Never heard of Teddy McSherry. This island's about the size of a dime with four people on it, and Teddy's been here for five years. You couldn't possibly miss him. Unless you meet him, you can't forget him. He's an unforgettable character. I don't care what's going on. I'll get us a cab. 
help. Well, if you're so rich, you don't need a fare. Uh, what are you doing driving a cab? You ought to go home and get some hot sun. And uh, yeah, how long have you been deaf? Two minutes, that's how long. Well, here's one for your checkered flag. Not only nobody's ever heard of anybody named McSherry, they don't even want to take us as fares. I Might like I be able to offer some minimal assistance? Yeah, you bet your sweet bongos you can. We're looking for a guy named McSherry, Ted McSherry. And this line of yin-yangs here is uh, clammed up on me. I want to know what's going on and why, or I'm going to start taking some names here. In a little bit less belligerent fashion, let me say, we are looking for a man by the name of Ted McSherry, who is a local resident here in these parts, and he was supposed to meet us here, and he hasn't, and so we are a bit concerned. We're not concerned, Ralph. I just want a straight answer, that's all. I am sorry you're experiencing difficulties. Perhaps if you have an address, I might offer my services and drop you. We try and accommodate the tourists. It is an important part of our new economy. Please. Oh, that's very nice of you. Yes, yes. Let's get it together and go. Come on. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome, tourists. We do what we can to make their stay enjoyable and comfortable. McSherry Salvage Company. Well, this has to be it, Bill. It says 1630, that's the address you had. Come on, troops, let's unload. Mr. Craig, you gotta work already? You gotta work already? Yeah. That's it, all right, that's his. Look at this. Some kind of a voodoo doll. Who do 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 do? You do to me. So what, Ralph? Guy gets a doll with a pin through it and his cow dies. It's a yawn, a real yucko. Voodoo. Voodoo. Give me a break. Excuse me. We found this over in the ashes. What is it? Is it voodoo? We're a mixture of many cultures on these islands. Some stretch back to Africa. Some reach out into the next century. We have color television, disco nightclubs, and we also have these. Never mind the Saturday morning kitty programs, pal. I want to know about this fire over here. It happened two weeks ago. I heard when it happened. You should think about leaving St. Pierre. Superstition and black magic are a way of life on the islands. Death follows the curse of the Papaloi. Some welcome in for me. We're talking, I don't know about this place, man. You don't know about this place? You've been here, what do you say? Cute, cute, cute. Regular cute comedian. I think I'll do a stand-up routine while you guys are going to Just sit down. Jeez, check this joint out, man. What happened to this joint? Yo, I think this is blood. Yo, what's this all about, this place? I think we should call the police. Look at this, Bill. La mort au pêcheur. Hey, what is that, a French lesson, Mr. H? Death to the fisherman. Oh, I hate this. Come on, you guys. I'm getting scared here. It's OK, Rhonda. All right, OK. Somebody uh, shoots a couple of blurts of uh, ketchup on the walls. It doesn't mean anything. Come on, let's hold it together here. Hey, you know, if they would have used spray cans, it would have, like, uh, lasted longer. <laughs> what is a joke, OK? <laughs> you all right, Rhonda? Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah, she's OK. Teddy had a great sense of humor, but there's no way he would have put up with all this without going down fighting. Ralph. Hey, that's me. Hey, that's my hair. And that axe almost fell on me. Listen, Bill, I, I don't know what's going on here, but uh, whatever it is, we're going to find out, all right? Step into my office, will you? Bill, what'd you get us into? Just what I told you. Teddy fell on a fishing boat, went down in a storm. Said it was a big deal, major loss. I figured uh, treasure, salvage, something. 
asking one of my help to bring it up. Why me, I don't know. But he said he'd been watching my kill record. Now I'm beginning to guess why he wanted me. I set the whole deal up just to help him and get the kids a free trip, a couple of bucks, and a spring vacation. End of scenario. Well, what about the doll in Pam's purse? That's real easy, Ralph. Oren, the mouth-breathing cab driver, stuck it in there while we were plowing around in the ashes. Also, he's a liar. Why? He said the fire was two weeks ago. I talked to Teddy last Wednesday. Didn't even mention it. So, we got a cab driver who's a liar, whatever that means. Ralph? Come here. There, that's your voodoo. We're gonna get some answers right now. I'm gonna go put on the suit, Bill. Got a job tomorrow, Mom. I promise. I'm, I'm, awake. I'm awake. What do we got? What do we got? Wow! Way to go, Blue. Bill's got that guy tied up in a boat. Pam, I'm gonna hot wire this jeep, and I want you to take the kids to the airport. Now there's a four o'clock plane leaving for Miami. I want you and the kids on it. Okay, Ralph. Look, I'll get the kids out of here, but I think I should stay. Pam, this food of things got me worried. You know, I don't know, you can call it superstition or whatever, but I, I just don't want you around here, all right? You know what you're doing there, Commander? OK, all right. Now, you see that little red wire? That's the ignition wire. You ground in a wrong wire, Chief. Hey, I'm impressed. I never told you much about my childhood, did I, Tony? Well, sometime we'll have to sit down and I'll tell you a story how I became a teacher. But right now, you all are getting out of here. And the good news, Sparky, is that the local blues are on their way. You don't have to talk to me because I'm out of my jurisdiction, but uh, they're going to open you up real good. Capito? Comprende? You got it? No speaking English. <laughs> OK. See. Glad to see you boys. Bill Maxwell, FBI. Well, that's a real good uh, response time. 16 and a half minutes. That's not bad. We are simple people, but we do the best we can. Perpetrators under arrest, tied up, uh, no ID, no English. We got some real big problems here, pal. I'll work up the scenarios. You take it from there. I'm not your pal, Mr. Maxwell. I am Chief Constable Philippe Augereau. Your badge is of no value in this country. You are subject to the laws of Saint-Pierre, the same as any visitor. I will afford you certain professional courtesies, that's all. You don't care that Ted McSherry is missing? His house looks like it was decorated by a finger painting class from Transylvania, as some goon is ripping up his boat? Let us see what you have caught, shall we? On the other hand, maybe you never heard of Ted McSherry either. That seems to be the most popular recording down here. Oh, yes, I know Mr. McSherry. Or at least I did. He died last night. Heart attack. Buried this morning. I had planned to come out and check his belongings, padlock the boat. But, but I was detained. I'm sorry. I can see that you were close friends. What I am, Constable. Ogaro is a professional lawman. I hope you are, too. Come on, I'll show you this bag of gristle we got here. Okay, that's him. He's a big baby, isn't he? 
It must be the boat record. Well, you might do something, Philippe, before I become more angry than I am. You do a speck of English, huh? That's nice. It's been one of those days. Ah, uh, that's quite a handful you got there. You can't just cut them. What's going on? Arrest them. Have them detained and made ready for presidential transport within two hours. I must have a charge. You will need nothing except my instructions. I am simply trying to enforce the legal statutes our parliament has passed. You know, I have grown tired of you many weeks ago, my friend. You tread a dangerous path with me, and I am ready to end the conflict now. So place your bet, Philippe, if you have the guts. What's going on? Uh, some kind of jurisdictional dispute, Ralph. Cuff them both. Put them in my sedan. That bag of gristle, as you put it, Mr. Maxwell, has turned out to be one General Louis Davou, head of the Presidential Security Force. He is the right-hand man of our new president, Etienne de la Hood. And you, my friend, are in deep, deep trouble. What is going on, General Davu? Get him ready for transport? That has an awfully nasty ring to it. These are the guys that sent Ted over. Sent him over where? Dead. He's dead yesterday. They're calling it a heart attack. His uh, house is ransacked. It's full of dead chickens. They're talking about a heart attack. Don't you love it? Well, it could be, Bill. I mean, I don't know much about voodoo, but I do know that it works on the mind. It's psychological. It's like you tell somebody they're sick, and sometimes they get sick, or rather, uh, the reverse, like uh, holistic medicine. You finished. I'm just trying to say. Well, don't, OK? Because I'm not listening. I know you and your friend were very close. I'm terribly sorry. Give me a break. The soldier. Friendship's got nothing to do with it. Soldier gets knocked over, and I'm going to find out who did it. Why? I'm going to nail their hides to the barn door. So let's not make it into a soap opera. Well, let's just lay low, all right? I got the suit on, and we'll see where it takes us. Yeah. Ted was a funny guy. I mean, funny, funny. Great sense of humor. Jokes will put you on the floor, but he was a softy. Always taking in strays, people, and dogs, and kids, and I don't know what all. I warned him. He had to get frosty, toughen up, but he wouldn't listen. Serves him right to bum. Serves him right. Excuse me, Chief Constable Ogeron? I'm Pam Davidson. Yes, may I help you? I have here a writ of habeas corpus from the American Charge Affairs. Demands that formal charges be drawn up against Ralph Hinckley and William Maxwell or they be released immediately. Please, uh, come into my office. The University of Kentucky? This paper is of little value. Look, I'm an attorney. I may not know your island law yet, but I do know international law. Do yourself a favor, Miss Davidson. Leave St. Pierre. I have little ability to enforce any law, be it island, international, or the law of humanity. You have the writ. I'm demanding they be released. Very well. I have given you the best advice I know. I will do what I can to exercise your writ. Now, if you will wait outside, please. Thank you for your cooperation. What's Pam doing here? She's a good soldier. She's stuck. Frankly, we could use a little legal firepower right now. Here we go, Bill. Hang on. Come here. Whatever happens, don't let them see the suit. Even if I'm getting busted around, we gotta find out what these guys are up to.
will ask two questions and I will get two answers. Failure to answer will result in drastic punishment. Well, he's just talking about the rubber hoses, the piano wire, and the baseball bats. Ralph, nothing to worry about. Why are you down here? For what reason? Uh, I'm a high school teacher and I brought my class down here to study historical and cultural blends in the 20th century. You kind of caught one there wrong, didn't you, Louie? Busted your paw, I hope. Are you here as agents of your government? How many people know of your visit down here? Abbott, Costello, Laurel, Hardy, Three Stooges, and Howard Cosell. He knows. Enough! These men are my prisoners. Remove them from themselves. You will not permit it. Will not permit. You will leave now. And you are dead. I have a writ from your attorney. It is worthless, but I will honor it. Go, get out of my jail. I cannot protect you. They will come back. They will arrest you, torture you, and kill you. I think you're in some trouble. The president is not interested in a constitution, in civil law. What we have is a martial law society, a police state. So please go before they come back. Well, you don't have to ask that twice. Nope. I thought I told you to leave. So sue me. Ralph, for Pete's sake, leave her alone. She got us out of this mess. Now, let's go. Let's get out of here. You're not going to believe this, but Ogero got his graduate degree from the University of Kentucky. No kidding. Well, I'm a graduate of the School of Skeptics, East Yahoo, Vermont. Well, I think we should go back to McSherry's and see if I can pick up some vibes. Took the words right out of my mouth. The voodoo has come. It has come. Well, if you're a friend of Teddy's the way you say you are, you've got to know who I am. He must have told you about me, Maxwell, Bill Maxwell. You, you and Teddy work together for the FBI? Yeah. <laughs> well, a friend to Teddy is no friend to mine. Is a friend of mine. Well, my, my English is top John, but my reading's not so good. Huh? The Tracy, uh, peanuts, little orphanage. We read them all time on the boat. Make fish heads too, sleep on deck in the summer rain. What's your name, partner? Suchet, Victor Suchet of the East Island Suchet. Uh, 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 fish, sell things on beach, big family, many daughters. Victor Suchet, I am Ralph Hinckley. Pleasure to meet you, this is Pam Davidson. Nice to meet you. A pleasure for mine. Victor. What is going on down here? Hey, Victor. Victor wants scared brother is what happened. Yeah, Victor run like crazy books, buddy. Teddy. Teddy is mocked. He laugh at Papaloi, and one night they come, and when they come, they walk on wind. They steal your spirit like the snake, deadly, and are gone. No more daddy warbucks this time to save little orphanage, so Victor run. And, and Teddy die. As a man, I'm nothing. Why stand dead? Well, Victor, maybe you were uh, afraid of the voodoo. That's certainly understandable. Yes, yes, but I come back. I come back to make right. If I die, I die is what I take. 
Well, Victor, I'm glad to have you aboard. I think between us, uh, we can come up with a damage control report, get a scenario going, and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, we'll translate for you, Victor. Uh, but why you come? Why Teddy ask you here? What stretcher? I bet he tell you what he found. Do you know where it is? Where the fishing boat is? Well, we don't know either. All we know is that we were supposed to come down here and help him salvage a, a boat that's stuck out here on a reef somewhere. Well, he no tell no one, not me, no one. I read good D. Tracy move, a real crime stopper. Eh? <laughs> he no tell, he no lose. Yeah, that was Teddy, all right. Real tight with the info. Leaves us with nothing at all. Well, I fix for the dinner. Hmm? Tomorrow, maybe we go out. With me, we find a supper. That works for me, amigo. Hey, Pacho. Hey, Cisco. Let's eat. Degrees, 17 minutes north. How is Miss Davidson? She's getting some Z's right now. She's good troops, though. She'll be all right. I did advise you to leave, Saint-Pierre. Yeah, well, you can tell the powers, spooky and otherwise, whatever, whoever, that that idea is out. They got one mean fet down there at Craw right now, and I'm not leaving this island until I find out what happened to Teddy McSherry. And Victor Suchet. Did you get a good look at those who took Suchet? Yeah, ordinary looking guys. Uh, war paint, feathers, throwing wet chickens around the walls, just ordinary. And had a tendency to scream and beat on drums and left strange calling cards. Picture beginning to form? I will do what I can to find out about the disappearance of this Victor Suchet. 
I hope Miss Davidson is feeling better. See how he was bothered by this thing, Bill? What are you talking about? Who cares what these people think anyway? Yes, but Ogero was a very intelligent man. He went to the University of Kentucky and everything. Hmm. Well. Ralph, I'll show you how to take care of the voodoo stuff. Come here. Ralph, all it takes is a sense of humor. You found the map. We haven't found the boat. It's under the water, either on that reef or that one. Well, it's the only lead we got. I think we should dive on it tomorrow. doing here? For the most part, we walked. It's a good thing we found his torches inside the road. Yeah. Oh, look at my shoes. Brand new pair of shoes and the heels are thrashed. Counselor, you were supposed to put this gang on an airplane. I did. I even saw it take off. What are you guys doing back here? Uh, you know, we saw you and Max were taken away in irons by the cops and figured, uh, well, you know, maybe it's something we could do to help you out. <sighs> All right. All right. All right, you can find a bunk somewhere and go to sleep. Huh? Whoa! Sure. Right. They sure get you the full time mate. <sighs> Listen, first thing in the morning, I want you to take the kids, and I want you to get on a plane, and I want you to leave. Get out of here. Yeah. We're gonna miss that plane. Come on, let's get this. Where's the football team when you need it? Come on, hurry up. She's burning up here. Ah! I'm gonna feed that guy at Rattle. No, wait a minute, Tony. Hey, come on. We can't chase guys to the jungle. Miss Davidson needs a doctor. Yeah. Let's go. All right, yeah. all right, all right. Come on, let's move this thing out of the way. Yeah, let's oh, get out of here. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Break it up, come on, man. Oh, my God, you guys, I think that's all. 
It's down there, Bill. It looks like it's been sunk by gunfire. Okay. Etienne's in the log. All right, let's read it out loud. Okay. Bill, that's no old fishing boat down there. The Etienne was a presidential yacht. Oh, boy. Okay, that's it. That's why they tipped Teddy the back spot. He must have found out it was down there, that it was the presidential yacht, and it was blown to pieces with 50 caliber slugs. But who would want to kill the president? Supposedly everyone loved him. Well, maybe except uh, the younger version, his son. Ogero said that uh, they always had differences of opinion. Well, we can hand this over to Ogero and let him do his thing. If he can do it. I don't know. He's uh, lined up against some pretty bad dudes. Well, if the people of St. Pierre felt strongly about the old president, then he'll have their backup. So, I think this is time we wrap up the vacation. We hand it over to Ogero and head for home. We found the overturned Jeep. Your friends never made the plane. They got him, Bill. It's just, they got him. Well... Do not worry, Mr. Hinckley. I will find your friends. The way you found Victor Suchet? Hey, that one's easy. I can guess that one. He's probably in an adjoining box next to Teddy down the street in St. Catherine's Cemetery. As a matter of fact, he is in St. Catherine's Cemetery. What? And he has been there since 1947. What, are you telling us that we saw ghosts? Well, I was getting real tired of dead chickens flying around and baby rattles anyway. What, uh, what are you talking about? Saint-Pierre is a small island. Uh, every citizen is recorded in those files. Victor Suchet has been dead for 34 years. Look at that, Bill. He's telling the truth. Victor Suchet was a papaloi. He was a priest of the highest order. He died of a serpent's bite during the summoning of Baron Samedi during a voodoo ritual. At the time, his followers believed that he was spiritually immune to death and would go on living in the bodies of others who would do his bidding. Welcome to the third wheel. I'm married to a zombie. You can't expect us to believe that everybody on St. Pierre is a believer in voodoo. No, of course not. They are a very small group. But if they are being sanctioned by the new president, as you imply, and carrying out the Vu and Lahood's orders, they can be extremely dangerous. Where would they take Pam and the kids? If they are followers of the legend of Victor Suchet, they are probably utilizing the same sacred grounds where his cult met. Do you know where that is? Dodie! Tough, Rhonda, get tough. President. He's Le Masters. Can we trust him? Of course. We pay him. He's one of ours. And the others? Yeah, they know nothing. You said this was a dead end. How much farther? They're just ahead. Well, then let me out. Come on, let me out. You heard him. Stop the car. <laughs> Miss Davidson. Victor. Victor, thank God you're all right. Yes. Uh, they keep me alive, so I tell where Bill and Ralph are, but I no tell. <laughs> I no tell. Are they here now? No. No, no, they didn't come with us. Ralph and Bill went to dive on the wreck that Teddy found. Fisherman to president overnight. Miss Maxwell. Maxwell! What? Hey, you! 
King Kong! He touches that dame, you get three eyes! Everybody's fine. Listen to me. Please. Listen. You all know me. You know that I was very close to Francois de la Hood, our former president. Well, I tell you the truth when I say that this man worked with the ones who killed Francois de la Hood. Yes, Etienne is responsible for the assassination of his own father. You have been used by this man who calls himself a papaloi. He and his men were paid, were paid to use you for evil purposes. So go home, please. Go to your homes. The kids have got the blinkers off, now you gotta get out of here. How do you do that? Truth is, when you started with us, pal, you're messing with bad juju, boss. <laughs> So, you guys get to hang around down here for another couple of weeks, hopping around the islands, taking the sun, chugging ice cold brew, native girls in the grass skirts. And good old do or die Maxwell, as a reward for his most recent smash triumph in behalf of justice in the American way, gets Carlisle and the LA smog. Boy, it's terrific that Constable Ozuroka had arranged to fly off the island for us, wasn't it? I just hope we have a better pilot than we had coming down. My stomach is still weak from that shrimp La Hood made for us. Ah, come on, counselor. We're down on the islands here. It's a little primitive. Best thing you can do is uh, buy your airplane ticket, close your eyes, and hope that the rubber band don't break. Mr. Hinckley, I believe I promised you a ride to your next destination. A lot classier than the DC-3, huh? <laughs> it was Etienne's latest toy. He won't be using it, and I'm sure he would want you to be more than comfortable on your journey off the island. Well, all right. Uh, uh, Mr. Maxwell, excuse me. Yeah. This is not your ride. But I have to get back to the United States. Precisely. But the St. Croix is to the south of us, so it is so much easier to send you on the same DC-3 airplane you came on. I hope you don't mind. Oh, I don't think he minds. Do you mind, Bill? Uh, keep on smiling, Bill. Teddy would have loved it. Yeah, as a matter of fact, he would have. 